Changing your diet can help to reduce stroke risk by about 19% according to a 2013 Cochrane review, one of the gold standards for evidence. So let's talk about the top five foods to avoid after a stroke and why reducing them can help decrease your risk. Added salt. So there are no surprises here, I'm sure. Added salt is simply not good for you. But it becomes complicated because as humans, we need salt to survive. It's when we eat it in excess that it becomes a problem. For example, in the United States, the average citizen consumes around 3,400 milligrams of sodium a day, when in reality, we should be eating around 2,300 milligrams per day, or equal to about a teaspoon of table salt. So how does too much salt in your diet affect stroke risk? Think of your heart and your blood vessels like a plumbing system. Your heart is pumping blood through your blood vessels all over your body to bring nutrients to your tissues and your organs. Blood pressure will rise if one of two things happens. If there is more blood in the blood vessels, so think more water is trying to be pushed through pipes, or there is a narrowing of blood vessels. So let's say that you have smaller pipes and you're trying to force the same amount of water through. Well, salt actually does both. It immediately increases the amount of blood in the bloodstream because water follows salt out of our cells and into the bloodstream. And then salt can also cause the blood vessels to narrow over time. It can damage the protective layer of tissue in our blood vessels that allows them to dilate or get bigger. And it can also cause our blood vessels to become stiff. So how can you lower added salt within your diet? Well, focus on fresh foods, fresh whole foods like vegetables and fruits. Avoid eating highly processed foods as they're almost always high in added salt. These include things like frozen pizzas, frozen dinners, canned soup, fast food, and cured meats. Cook at home more often. You have much more control over what you put in your food at home versus going out to eat. And at home, you can limit your added salt intake by using spices and herbs to give your food more flavor. Added sugar. The CDC recommends that no more than 10% of our daily calories come from added sugars. So for someone on a 2000 calorie a day diet, that means that only around 200 calories would be coming from added sugars or around 12 teaspoons. However, in the United States, the average adult consumes around 17 teaspoons of added sugar a day. Unfortunately, this overconsumption of sugar is partially due to the fact that almost all of our processed foods in the United States contain lots of added sugar. It's hard to find anything that doesn't contain high fructose corn syrup or added sugars. So why are added sugars so bad for us and how can they contribute to stroke risk? Well, eating added sugars can lead to a whole host of health issues, including high blood pressure, which we've already talked about how that can impact your stroke risk. Too many added sugars can also lead to inflammation, particularly low-grade chronic inflammation. And this can lead to weight gain, obesity, and even autoimmune conditions. We know that when stress is placed on our system in the form of excess weight, that it can lead to a bunch of different health issues, including an increase in stroke risk. Too many added sugars in your diet can also lead to type 2 diabetes. This is called insulin resistant diabetes, meaning that your body is still producing insulin, which is the hormone that's used to help control blood glucose. However, your cells are not letting that insulin in to do its job. So blood sugar, blood glucose accumulates in the blood and builds up and builds up and it eventually results in a lot of different issues. So how can we reduce added sugars in our diet? Well, first, try to avoid drinking your calories, meaning stay away from regular sodas, sports drinks, and fruit juices. They have a lot of added sugar. And even if you're drinking 100% fruit juice, recognize that you're still missing out on a lot of the benefits if you were just eating a regular fruit by itself, like fiber. And two, you wanna avoid kind of the stuff that's obvious. Avoid pastries, cookies, other desserts that have a lot of added sugar. Saturated fat. Did you notice the asterisk? This one comes with some interesting information. Stroke risk and fat consumption has been controversial for a while. However, the American Heart Association still recommends that only five to 6% of our daily calories comes from saturated fats. 
And this is because they tend to raise LDL or bad cholesterol, which can influence the development of heart disease and even risk of stroke. However, there was a study in 2021 that looked at the link between saturated fat and stroke risk. And they found that it's actually more important to look at the type of fat and where it comes from that actually determines the stroke risk. They found that participants who had a higher intake of animal fat from non-dairy sources had an increased risk of stroke. And those who ate more vegetables and unsaturated fats had a lower risk of stroke. So in this study, overall, the consumption of saturated fat was not linked to an increased risk of stroke. However, the researchers did note that they needed to have more research. They needed to look at the link between dairy sources of saturated fat, vegetable sources of saturated fat, in addition to animal sources of saturated fat, and compare those to get a more definitive answer on saturated fats link to stroke risk. So what's the takeaway on saturated fats and stroke risk? In general, it's probably still a good idea to not consume too many saturated fats. Stick to the AHA's recommendation of five to 6% of your daily calorie allowance because it still has been shown to raise LDL or bad cholesterol, which is a stroke risk and a risk for heart disease. You can focus specifically on reducing saturated fats from animal products and especially from red meat. Do eat plenty of unsaturated fats from plants, nuts, seeds, veggies, as we still need fat to have a balanced diet. Red and processed meat. Red meat has been associated with certain cancers, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease for some time. A 2017 meta-analysis published in the Journal of the American Heart Association found that higher consumption of red meat led to an 11% increase in stroke risk. Consumption of processed meat led to a 17% increase in stroke risk. And consumption of white meat led to a 13% reduced risk of stroke. How does red meat increase stroke risk? Well, it's thought to be due to the higher content of saturated fat in red meat. And the way that this increases stroke risk is it can raise LDL or bad cholesterol and triglycerides in the blood. When this happens, it causes the buildup of plaques in our blood vessels, causing the arteries to clog, meaning that it could reduce blood flow to a certain part of the brain or even the heart, or perhaps a piece of that plaque could break off and cause a clot elsewhere in our body. Red meat also contains something called heme iron, which is said to cause oxidative reactions. And these oxidative reactions cause damage to the building blocks of our cells, which can lead to cardiovascular and neurological issues. So how do processed meats increase stroke risk? Well, they're typically made with the preservative sodium nitrate. And with the word sodium in it, you can imagine salt. This component, this preservative, can actually increase high blood pressure, meaning that we have an increased risk of stroke. So how does white meat decrease stroke risk? It has less heme iron than red meat, and it also contains polyunsaturated fats, which have been shown to reduce LDL or bad cholesterol. So what's the takeaway on reducing red and processed meat consumption? Try to avoid or limit eating beef, processed meats like pepperoni, salami, and hot dogs. Try to increase your white meat intake, like turkey and chicken instead of red meat. And maybe even plan to have a vegetarian dinner once a week. And lastly, alcohol. And I know some of you might be thinking, wait a minute, I have heard that some level of alcohol can actually be protective against stroke risk. Well, there are mixed findings in the literature, but I did find a more recent study, a large international study published in the Neurology Journal in 2023 with some very interesting findings. In that study, a high alcohol intake was associated with an increased risk of both ischemic and hemorrhagic strokes. And importantly, a low to moderate intake of alcohol was not found to be protective against stroke risk. They also found that the type of alcohol was important. So for example, beer and spirits like liquor were found to increase the risk of stroke. But on the other hand, wine consumption was actually found to decrease the risk of ischemic stroke. 
However, of note, the researchers did point out that they weren't sure if that was due strictly to the wine intake or if it was due to other factors like the fact that wine drinkers were more physically active. So how does alcohol increase stroke risk? Well, it contributes to high blood pressure, which we've talked about a bit. When consumed in more than the recommended amounts, it can lead to weight gain, obesity, and type 2 diabetes, especially if you're drinking really sugary drinks. It can also trigger AFib or atrial fibrillation and other cardiac arrhythmias, which we know are underlying stroke risk factors. And it can also interfere with medications and particularly some medications that are meant to be helpful in preventing stroke. What are some ways to reduce alcohol intake? Well, first of all, talk with your doctor to make sure that it's even right for you in the first place. If you're not a big drinker, maybe don't start now. If you like to drink just a little bit, maybe opt for wine instead of beer or liquor. And if you're a heavy drinker, talk with your doctor about ways that you can bring that consumption down. If you use alcohol to relax, maybe try exploring other healthier alternatives for you to find a way to relax instead of relying on alcohol. All right, everyone, that's it for today. Leave me a comment and let me know where there are some foods that you were told not to eat after your stroke. And if you're still looking for more information about foods and diet after stroke, check out this video I made a while ago about good dietary approaches for stroke prevention. As always, if you found this video helpful, please make sure to leave it a like. And if you're new here, subscribe to the channel and click the bell to get notifications on when I post new videos. Poststroke is a nonprofit, and you can help us keep our content free, either by giving us a super thanks by clicking in the YouTube bar below, by giving us a one-time donation via PayPal, or by becoming a Patreon member, where in exchange for a monthly donation, you get access to cool perks like social media shoutouts, behind the scenes footage, and even YouTube shoutouts, of which I have some today. And a special thank you to Heather G in our Empower tier. We cannot do what we do without you all. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.